sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, mm -hmm. and there were also with him other little ships. Yes. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, uh -huh. so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Yes. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Yes. What we're going to take for a topic this morning uh -huh. is simply, we're going to make it. Yes. Yes. Somebody yes. shout that this morning, we're going to make it. Now this particular passage of scripture, Jesus had just got through teaching the disciples and other folk in parables. And he had just got through talking to them about the grain of mustard seed and the, the power of faith. And Jesus, as a man, got tired. As a man, he got tired. He was weary from all the work he was doing, and, and he wanted to get a little rest. So he began to tell them in the 35th verse, let us pass over unto the other side. 36th verse. And when they had sent him away, the mul when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Meaning he sent the people that couldn't get out there with him. They sent them away. Because they wanted Jesus to be by himself. They wanted some time 
for Jesus to be alone. But the other people that had ships began to get in their respective ships, which were smaller, yes. and began to follow Jesus. Why? Because they wanted to be close to him. Yes. The 37th verse says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Yes. They began to go, and as they were on their way, the storm began to rise. Come on, come on, come on. That's how it is with some of us. When we're on our way to something better, storms began to arise. It seemed like every time you look like something good is going to happen, something bad overshadows what's to come. And the 38th verse says, and what he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? But Jesus was asleep while all this was going on. A, a great song, the, the, the ship is filling up with water. And Jesus is asleep in the hinder part of the ship. Yes. Now I wanted to know the significance of Jesus being asleep in the hinder part, in the stern of the ship. If we don't get technical, the, the stern is the back. And what it what it means is there was a bilge. And the bilge is the rounded portion of the ship's hull forming a transition between the bottom and the sides. Yes. Now the hull is the main part of a ship or a boat or it's the outer covering of a fruit grain of seed. A lot of people didn't understand hull because so many times they tell us to throw the hulls away. But it's the same thing as the hull. It's the protective covering that keeps what's inside good. It, it, it keeps what's inside protected. It, it protects it from anything that's outside of it. When, when you talk about fruit, they use pesticide and diff different, you know, things to help it grow. So you don't want that actually getting in the fruit. So the fruit has a protective covering. Now, when you begin to talk about the ship, the ship's hull, when it goes from side to bottom, you need something strong enough to help it transition. That way the water does not break the seams. So Jesus, Jesus was in the stern of the ship, meaning he was in the very part where the ship was weakest. Now what began to happen, Dr. Ramos, what began to happen is they began to be on their way to the other side. And they, they began to they began to encounter a storm. And the Bible say that the ship began to fill up with water. Now what we have to understand about a ship is that a ship cannot sink until the water reaches the bottom. Now we the most now what begin to happen is the disciples begin to see the water coming on board and they begin to panic, they begin to get afraid, and they begin to warn that Jesus, how can you sleep in a time like this? But Jesus understood that I don't have to worry until it reach the bottom. But I am at the bottom so I don't have to worry. But the disciples not understanding who they had on the ship begin to panic. And they begin to go to Jesus and say, Jesus, you gotta get up because there's a storm that's going on. There's wind that's blowing. There's water that's coming in. Now at the bottom of the ship, it is called the bilge. Now along with the bilge, they have what's called a bilge pump. Or in the, la in the earlier days, they called it a pump force. Yes, come on. They call it force pumps. Nowadays they have the mechanical ones and they call them bilge pumps. Now what the purpose of that is that if the water reaches the bottom of the ship in the stern, it's the bilge pump's responsibility to push the water back out to keep the ship from sinking. Now back in the days they didn't have the mechanical bilge pumps so they had 
force pumps. Uh -huh. Now what they were used for, they were used in multiple ways. To pump water into a fish tank to prefer, preserve fish for selling uh -huh. or to combat fires. Uh -huh. Meaning either way it looked, that pump was there to preserve what was in the ship. Somebody go get that in a second. The pump was there to preserve what was in the ship. Now what began to happen is when they woke Jesus, Jesus didn't panic Jesus. He did the double side. He wasn't worried but what he did was he calmly went to the top of the ship and he began to say peace be still. Now why was he able to do that? Because in our lives Jesus is our build pump. Jesus is our force pump. So in the paradox, so when you're going in the troubles of life and it seems like you're taking in more than you can handle, you just got to remember that you got God down on the inside and it cannot sink you till it reaches God. Yes, 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 who they had at their weakest point. Yes. Yes. Let me say that again. The disciples did not understand yes. who they had at their weakest, at the weakest point. Uh -huh. And we're talking physically because Jesus was at the physical part, the weakest part of the ship. And he had a side. But they began to they began to get worried. And they began to get scared. But what we have got to understand is that the pump is not activated until it reaches bottom. And there's a reason for that. The devil's side. The pump does not start pushing out until the water reaches bottom. Why? Because it understands that once it reaches bottom, I've got to do something. I've got to activate to make sure this ship doesn't go down. So I just come to encourage somebody that don't you panic right now because you have not reached. So what does that mean? That means that God is still there, but it ain't time for him to activate. Why? Because the process has not yet been completed. So I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you dare start to panic. Neighbor, don't you give up. Why? Because it looks bad, but it ain't over. It seems bad, but it ain't over. I'm thinking on some things. But I'm still on top of the water. I have not yet started saying it. Before we even start going down. Come on now. Yes. Come on. We still surviving. And we start to panic. We still making it. And we start to panic. But it was a time, it was a time for the bill pump to activate. Because he wanted them to understand that even though you're taking on some things, I'm still there. I'm still there. Don't panic. Because you still afloat. Jesus was asleep. Storms are raging. Jesus sleep. Wind is blowing. Jesus sleep. The ship is sinking on water. Jesus sleep. Bills need to be paid. Seem like Jesus sleep. Having issues in our bodies. Seem like Jesus sleep. But I need you to look at yourself. You still got your house. You still got food on your table. You still got breath in your body. What does that mean? That's a double sign. That means that you have not yet even started to sink. That means that the greatest moment of your life hasn't even happened yet. Why? Because the Bible begins to declare that when I am weak. At my weakest point. That's when the strength of God shows up best. Why? Because I'm totally dependent on him to do it. Now what began to happen is that when they woke Jesus, 
Yes. Jesus began to calm the sea. And then he began to say to them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Not little faith. No faith. How is it after walking with me and being taught in full? Let me explain that. In the parables, when he began to teach the people in parables, he taught the people in parables. But when he got his disciples alone, he taught them in full. So they will understand exactly what he was saying. Now when the storm began to rise, it just bothered Jesus a little bit that you could not even wait until we made it to the other side. But you had to come and wake me up. You just took me away because I was tired. And you're going to interrupt my rest because you don't have any faith after you after you see what I'm capable of. After you walk with it. After you talk with it. After I sat down and taught you. Right. You still, still. have no faith. Now why did this bother Jesus so much? Because Jesus had already given them a reason not to worry. He had already given them a word to let them know you're going to make it. Bishop, what that 35th verse says? And the same day uh -huh. when the evil was come uh -huh, we get ready to close. Uh -huh. He said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Read that part one more time, Bishop. Uh -huh. He said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Read it one more time, Bishop. Uh -huh. They said, sit down. He said unto them, let us pass over uh -huh. unto the other side. Now what began to happen? Uh -huh. Jesus, Jesus had already told them, let us go over until the other side. Now he had already prophesied deliverance that we're going to make it before the soul of the world. Here it is, we're worrying and we're with the most high. We're getting anxious and scared over something that God delivered us from before we even stepped into it. Somebody needs to understand that we will make it. It looks hard. 
Yeah.